Hello guys, it's time for a, a new tutorial. This time I've been asked from a friend uh, to show you a puzzle game concept or, or how, how to do a puzzle game. So there's some multiple ways uh, how to do this. I'm gonna show you uh, one way uh, and later on we're gonna create uh, the functionality of the puzzle. Uh, so let's uh, let's get started. So I have opened it uh, already a unity project unity 2d project and i'm i have imported uh, the picture of my cat so we are gonna use this picture to to slice down uh in nine uh, blocks in nine pieces uh so uh as you see i have already saved uh, the scene and just before that let me just not to not forget i'm gonna add uh event event uh, physics to the ray caster because we are gonna be working with the collider 2d afterward so uh, how we are gonna do this the next uh, thing we want to do is uh, import uh, the quad object okay here it is the quad object so let let me just uh, rescale this to 1.3 size on x and 1.3 on epsilon uh, and so we want uh, 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 this part to be shown on this part and so on on each pieces so we are gonna be working just uh, on one piece we're gonna set uh, the settings of what should one piece have uh, so we don't need the mesh collider we're going to remove the component mesh collider and we're going to add a physics to the box collider okay there there it is the box collider and uh, to keep it uh, simple we are going to do a three on three or, or three by three uh, puzzle game uh, to, to keep it simple okay so the the next uh, thing we're gonna do is uh, quickly uh, create a small script relative to this object so we are gonna uh, this object uh, eventually gonna be moved replaced by another block so uh, we're gonna name a uh, uh, move move to new location. Okay, Let, let's name uh, this script like that and double click it. Let's just say this is just is a very small script. Let's give it the time to Visual Studio. Okay, and here we are. So uh we're going to be needing uh a private vector tree endpoint so this is where the new location of this block going to move uh then we're going to initialize this vector to the current transport transform position of this block okay and in the update, we're gonna say each time there is a new endpoint, new vector, new new available spot, uh, our position uh, move move slightly with using the move toward function from the vector tree vector tree class. So vector tree point uh, move towards. So here it expects the current vector so we're just gonna say transform position then it expect it expects the target where it's gonna move so that's the endpoint and the speed the speed I've uh, pre-calculated that the nice speed is gonna be 0.2 Okay, and then we're gonna 
a write a small, very small function. Again, a void function, because later on we're gonna send be sending messages to the blocks. Uh, void, and we're gonna just say new point. Okay, that's how we're gonna we're gonna say the function vector tree. It expects a new vector and that vector it's gonna be assigned to our endpoint okay so each time you're gonna call this function the endpoint here it's gonna become a new point and immediately because it's in update it's gonna move uh, with the same speed from here to here okay so that's about let's just file save and uh, let's go back to our Unity project. So the key for this type of uh, doing puzzle, this concept, it's the material. Okay, so we are going to create a new material. And we are going to say part one. Uh, in that part one, we, we need to edit the shader of the material, okay? So we are going to be using unlit texture. And in it asking us to select the texture, so we're going to select the cat, of course. And oh, oh, what I mean by this is... Uh, that here the texture works as if it, as the sides are one on one in the tiling and the offset input boxes. Okay, so we because we're doing a, a three by three puzzle, we need uh, to rescale the tiling. So that would be one divided by three. It's zero point three three, and also for epsilon. Uh, and here we want to do uh, zero point the offset zero 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 point six six. I'm gonna just 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 in a second. I'm gonna show you why it's zero point six 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 six. Of course, you can add more sixes. We're just gonna play with two digits. Uh, and that's about it. That's all the part one needs. So back on the quad, and by the way, we're gonna name this quad one. Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna put uh, a new material. We're gonna put new material in the mesh render. So instead of default material, it's going to be the part one. Okay. So as you see, this is the part where the cat has just her ear, okay? So we need to repeat the same process for all other blocks of the puzzle. Uh, and the key to this is uh, to just uh, go and, uh, because this is, the material is the key, we just go and uh, copy, open ex explorer, just copy these parts. In part two. Okay, up uh, to nine. So let me see just if this works. Yeah, it's gonna, it's giving us our an error, an error, but uh, I think it's nothing. Okay. Uh, and this is because oh we need to edit uh, each manually okay so we are gonna go unlit texture again select 0 0.333 and this time it's gonna be 0 uh, and on y 0 point uh, 33. 
uh, now actually we are going on the other way around. So this is the zero on X. We are moving on X and then on Y. It's gonna be this is gonna remain six six for three of them. So actually I'm gonna give you a visual what what I'm think of. So I'm gonna just duplicate the quads and just make actually a D game. Okay, duplicate name three. Okay, position this and then just select all of them, duplicate, multiply, and again duplicate, duplicate, uh, multiply. And this is this is our puzzle. Okay, nine pieces. And so we need to, to assign the correct material to create and, and assign the correct material to all blocks. So before that, let me just rename this properly. Okay, quad five, quad six, quad seven, and quad eight. Okay, and uh, so what I'm doing is imagine that this is the start point of the texture, okay, zero. And so when I say this in the part one, I say uh, zero, okay, so this is zero, and we need to move up two blocks, and that's 0 0.333 and now 0 0.66, okay, so it's here. So now we have to move here, then here then here and here and so on so in part two we have we have moved here and here so we need this okay so this is done so let's create another material this is part three again this is kind of redundant select the same 0 0.33 tiling and now we moved to 0 0.66 on X and this remains same. Okay, so we uh, just to show that I'm right, I'm gonna uh, assign a new part. So this asks for part two. So we give a part two. See, there, there is the continuation of the picture. And quad three needs the part three and uh, so on. So let's just continue adding the materials, part four. Of course, for bigger puzzles, you will need uh, a bigger amount of uh, blocks, bigger amount of materials. There is other possible ways of how to do it. For example, in this new Unity uh, 2017, uh, there is the tile map. So maybe you, you can also do a puzzle game with the tile maps, playing around with editing each one of them. But that's for another video. Uh, so we want uh, this here. So 0 and 0 0.33. Okay, so let's assign this material, part four. Okay, again, the central part, part five. Unlit texture, select 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 0 0.33, because just I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna show you what if I put something else in tiling, just in case. And now we have uh, 0 0.33 with 0 0.33. Okay, so five, five, and so let let's just say that uh, we want to edit the part in one. You see that you get. A messed up or we want a zero we, we messed up the picture of course if you if you that is what you need 
then do it. But I'm gonna do uh, right one on one uh, properly. Okay, so we let's move to the part six. Zero point three three, zero point three three, and we want now uh, zero point three three coordinates with zero point six six. I believe this this thing here. Oh, we didn't name part uh, six. Okay. Part 6 sounds uh, uh, not right. Actually, I need this to be 6-6 six, six, and this to be 3-3. Three, three. We're, we're still on that. It's about right. We're still on the second row. And now the final row create material, omelet. Texture. Of course, you can do other shaders as long as it has styling and offset attributes. And uh, this one is zero zero, so we're just gonna let the part seven be as is. So quad seven is a part seven. And then a new material for part 8 and this just asks for the epsilon part 8 oops I think we did wrong here Part 8 is uh, 0 0.33 and this epsilon is 0. Yes, of course. I'm getting confused. Part 9, the last part, and we're good to go to do a little scripting of how actually this game is gonna function. It's not a big deal. We're going to do 0 0.66 and this is 0 epsilon. So let's just put the last part. Okay, so what we want to do here is uh, move this slide, this block. When we press it, we're going to move here and this block here, it's going to go here. But how do we know if uh, this block wanted to go here and not here? So that's why we are going to put a new object, a finger object. So we're going to create an empty object called finger object. Okay. And we're going to add I don't know why the Z is not zero, okay? Uh, we're gonna add uh, a physics uh, circle, circle, circle collider 2D. Okay, here it is. I think we're gonna be move this forward maybe it's gonna show up yes okay so let's move it minus one okay uh, and this object when we press here uh, it's gonna refer to this object and this object and how do we know this we are gonna put another uh, object which is going to be 
a children to finger object called a okay we're just gonna uh, give him a icon so we can see it okay and we are gonna move this on x uh, by minus 0 0.7 okay and we we need also on the other side a uh, b object on the other side so that's in positive and so when we select the finger object you now see that uh, this object is going to check if it's over if it overlaps uh with some object and this object is going to see it if it overlaps with this object and all of that by pressing the on pointer down on this circle here so we need uh, to create now the main script for the basic interaction and functionality of this puzzle game so we are going to call this script uh, slight click okay so i don't want i know i want a capital slide so double click on slight click okay and so what we need here to import is another namespace from unity unity engine dot event system okay because we are gonna be implementing the pointer down behavior so e pointer down handler and it's not implemented so we are gonna implement that I like uh, I like uh, to remove this default exception and just to move it down uh, we are gonna deal with this uh, later on first what we need is uh, some uh, references some uh, necessary necessary uh, variables and first thing we want to do is uh, create uh, two public transforms called A. So I imagine you already know what I'm doing. And public transform B. So we won't gonna be doing a get child component, get uh, all of that. We are gonna just directly file and save and go in unity click the finger object wait for it to be updated and just drag and drop it child's okay we need these points so we can refer to a wanted location if there is a block or there is a nothing or maybe there is something else what depends on what whatever you're having in your game so let's go back to our script. There we go. They they had their uh, reference. They they are not new. Uh, then we need a private vector trees to remember the start location on each block. Uh, so. That, that that is to say the, the the first block has a starting point and that needs to be remembered and uh, also uh, the other guy also have a starting point so they need to switch the places so that that's what all we're doing uh, and start D okay we're dealing with a script with two blocks now and then we need to get the collider collider to this of those uh, blocks so we're gonna call it uh, also private we're gonna call it uh, tt equal null and dd equal null okay 
but if we are clicking uh, non-stop you know like whenever you want you're going to mess up uh, by fastly this this at some point there's going to be bug where you this uh these blocks might go still didn't went here and you're pressing to go next uh it, you're gonna mess up the puzzle game as i'm doing so for that reason we need to add uh a static static bull called a locker and it's going to be false at first nothing is locked so whenever you press uh, uh, the on, on pointer down uh, the locker is gonna lock down for a very small amount of time and we're, we're, it's it's gonna be able to click again only if the locker is false if it's unlocked in other words okay uh, and uh, we don't need actually this start function we're gonna delete that and in update in update we're gonna say if we are not locked and actually let's do it the other way if 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 it's locked then uh, make the timer and we're gonna use time dot frame count module 30 equals to zero if this is true then locker equals false okay so what what is this condition here uh, this is a frame count just uh, counting in integer one two three eternally until the our game runs so this 30 here means a half second because 60 frames is one second we need a half second to pass and what is this module here this module means that uh, let's just say the frame count is now at one one module 30 is uh, one divided by 30 is zero but the one still remains so one equals zero it's not true and it's gonna raise this count every frame every frame it's gonna it's gonna uh, hit eventually to 30 okay so 30 divided by 30 is one and we don't have a module it's zero module so zero module so zero equals zero is true so this is gonna pass this time when the frame count is 30 and the locker again it's going to be unlocked okay so uh let's now actually i'm, I'm gonna just uh, just to show you i'm gonna uh, debug debug lock the time dot frame count just for you guys to see what's going on and we are going to move now in the main uh, function what it's going to happen when we press uh, the collider so here if it's not locked okay if not locker so if it's unlocked in other words uh, immediately lock us down so locker and equals to true oops it's true okay and then because we might uh, before pressed uh, some other pointers some other some other colliders we need here to to reset whatever we're doing it's fine we're gonna equal the tt and dd to null okay because we want constantly a new TT, a new DD, new colliders. Because in the game we are going to be pressing here, 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 and the TT needs to be resetted because one one block might participate in this script here or this script here, and, and this script here also is connected with this one uh, see the blocks are connected because in between there is a finger object we are, we are now dealing with this finger object 
And what this uh, helper object A and B sees, it need to be resetted. Okay, so uh, let's just put here debug dot lock if uh, on mouse down happen it. So on mouse down happen it. Okay, just a simple debug. And here we're uh, going to directly just, just simply ask and assign if something is overlapping something. So TT equals physics physics 2D dot overlap and we are gonna use the function point. This is just one call, one simply if uh, if if this overlaps something so of course here it's gonna overlap this box here and this is gonna overlap this box here overlap point and uh, we here want our E point okay so TT is gonna be responsible for the A position okay A position and DT is gonna be responsible so let's let me just actually copy this dd is going to be responsible for the b position and what are those those are this here we we have them and uh, now it's uh, time for the exception checking so if tt it's not null okay it's not null so there is something so there is there is a block that we detected here that because this might return false and dd is also is also not null okay i'm gonna just type if both exist uh, then we need uh, to save our their, their starting position so start t equals tt dot transform dot position okay and the same about the starting of the b actually that's the dd position so dd dot transform dot position okay and now we are good to say to send to spread the message to the actual boxes to to go in this script and uh, call this function within them okay and how we're going to do that with the basic concept that unity has so tt this is the collider 2d and what game object is uh, assigned on that collider is the game object the instance itself and then we have the send message function and here it it expects uh, a function name but uh, written in uh, a string so new point and be sure to not miss this okay new point is the same name of the function here new point exactly as, as it is you might want to copy and paste in uh, like a string and because this function expects uh, input parameter, this vector tween n, uh, here we are good to say that tt needs to be moved to the uh, to the dd starting point, and that's a start d. That's why we save this. Uh, the thing why we are saving is because uh, this is going to start moving, and we'll no longer. Uh, uh, the starting we, we won't know the starting position so that's why we're saving it in start d and also tt with in start t okay so i i think you get the point uh and dd dot game object dot send message same process in new point and this time a d is moving to t to tt okay And uh, that's all about this script. 
let me just see if, if I forgetting something okay so let's save and actually we, we let's just see if we are good good enough so far so if I click here uh, we are forgetting the event system actually uh, so we forgot a small thing we need to import the user interface event system this thing must be in unity for in order so to to in order for us to send uh, messages like this on input uh, on input on pointer down on pointer up and by the way if you do a pointer on pointer up you must implement on pointer down or otherwise it's it's not going to work you won't receive on pointer up unless you implement on pointer down so okay let, we imported event system so let's try one more time and if we press here see the the blocks are changing their spots so as you might as you know as you might uh already see this true where i'm going uh i'm go gonna duplicate this finger object and just just move this here okay between these blocks and that's how we add functionality to the puzzle games so let's uh, j just test uh, how it is with two blocks so here is this and here is this and here is this and here is this okay so uh, repeat this process for each in between spaces here okay so let's just say if we want to rotate this 90 degree okay you don't need to program anything just rotate this whole this whole prefab you might want to create a prefab out of this for other times or i don't know whatever you need it and uh, let's just test this here and here and here click click okay it's working so uh, you have uh, the idea of the concept of creating a puzzle games uh, now the the things you you want to want is maybe you want a four on four bigger puzzle bigger uh, something something and you need also to uh, to remember uh, if you did uh, correctly so you need to save uh, you're gonna need to play with arrays uh, remembering the positions of each one detecting if it's on correct position and that finally you have solved the the puzzle let's move to the next puzzle but i'm not going to be dealing with that i'm just going to show you uh, the starting concept of how to do a puzzle game so uh that's about it thank you very much for watching me see you in uh, the next video